Hey there, you're two families of faith. Father Rob here. Hope everybody is doing well, staying safe and staying healthy. I hope things are going well with school as well as with our ongoing study here of our Family of Faith program. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what's coming up in November because we're talking about the sacraments and we're talking about baptism in particular with this month's activities. But first we will talk about the sacraments of initiation. And what does that mean for all of us? What is it to be initiated? To be initiated means that you were formally brought into something. You're made part of something. And so when we are initiated into our faith, we are initiated into a vocation. What does that mean? That means we're initiated for a purpose. We're given a mission. We're given something to do. We're not just initiated and then nothing happens or we don't do anything else. We're given a mission. We're given a vocation with our very lives. And what is that vocation from our Christian initiation? That is to be holy, to be holy and to evangelize. All of us are called to do this. We think, well, what does it mean that I have to be holy? Do I walk around like this all the time, waiting for a light beam to bounce off my head and and I'm walking around like all Santito or something? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. To be holy means, and to evangelize, to be holy and to evangelize mean that we live our lives every day as though Jesus Christ makes a difference in our lives. And we know that he does, but when we truly live that way, Other people see this and they recognize that there's something different. They recognize that we're doing things differently, that we're living differently, that we may even appear differently. And so we're living this life of holiness and we're evangelizing, meaning we're spreading the good news. And that means that we let Jesus make a difference in our lives. We live in that relationship and then we tell people about it. So that's what it means to be holy and to evangelize. It doesn't mean that we're going to stand on a street corner and whack people over the heads with our Bibles or with our rosaries or things like that. But it means that we live the lives of saints, that we're striving towards sainthood. Now remember, the saints are imperfect people, but they're imperfect people who knew they needed a Savior. And that's the same for all of us, too that we are imperfect people. But again, we strive every single day to live as though Jesus makes a difference in our lives. And then we tell others about the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. We tell people what we know about Jesus. And we know things about Jesus by spending time with him, by reading sacred scripture, by studying our faith, by buying a UCAT or the Catechism of the Catholic Church, by giving God some of our time every single day. He's the one that gave us life. He's owed a little bit of our time. And a lot of times we wait until the very end of the day when we're in bed and then we go, oh God, I forgot to pray. And that's the extent of our time with God. That has to change. And so to live a life of holiness recognizes all the good things that God has done for us, most of all in giving us life and then giving some of that life back to him and giving him some of our time and doing it, at least in the case of what we're studying here, as family growing together in faith. And that's a beautiful and very, very important thing. And so that you grow together in your vocation and then you evangelize one another. And then when you leave the house, you evangelize other people as well. Again, not smacking people upside the head with rosaries and Bibles and things like that but living as though Jesus makes a difference in our lives to live that holy life. So here's an example of that. This comes from the UCAT. I've mentioned this before, where it takes the catechism and condenses it into much smaller paragraphs and puts it at a reading level uh, for our young people to understand. And so here is this question. Are we all supposed to become saints? The answer is yes. The purpose of our life is to be united with God in love and to correspond entirely to God's wishes, we should allow God to live his life in us, in us, which is a quote from Mother Teresa. A little tongue-tied today. And so that is what it means to be holy, to be a saint, to allow God to live his life in us. And then it goes on to say this. And this is in the church's language here. So it's so going to say about man and men, which means men and women, boys and girls. So, but again, that's kind of a churchy way of saying that. And it says, every man asks himself the question, who am I and why am I here? How do I find myself? Faith answers, 
Only in holiness does man become that for which God created him. Only in holiness does God find real harmony between himself, does man rather, find real harmony between himself and his creator. Holiness, however, is not some sort of self-made perfection. Rather, it is union with the incarnate love, that means the in-flesh love, that is Christ. Anyone who gains new life in this way finds himself and becomes holy. So that's what our life is called to be. And how does this begin? This begins our initi- with our initiation into our faith at baptism. There are three sacraments of initiation in our faith. Baptism, First Holy Communion, and Confirmation. But it all begins with baptism. And so this is something to uh, really examine and explore because this is where it begins. This is why baptism is a big deal. It's not just for a family event. It's not just for a party. It's not just for a bunch of gifts. And for godparents, it's not just being given an honor. You're being given an extremely serious responsibility, one that parents and godparents will answer for at the end of their li- earthly lives when they stand before God. So it's a big, huge deal. And so, again, it begins with baptism. So we're going to go back into the UCAT here and go to another paragraph that uh, is actually part of our reading this month. We're supposed to read lots of paragraphs from the Catechism. And so here's one of them. This is paragraph 1212 uh, that is condensed into this one here in the UCAT. It says, what is baptism? Baptism is the way out of the kingdom of death into life, the gateway to the church, and the beginning of a lasting communion with God. Baptism is the foundational sacrament and the prerequisite of all the other sacraments. It unites us with Jesus Christ, incorporates us into his redemptive death on the cross, and thereby frees us from the power of original sin and all personal sins, and it causes us to rise with him to a life without end. Since baptism is a covenant with God, meaning a very serious promise to enter into relationship with him, the individual must say yes to it. In the baptism of children, the parents confess the faith on behalf of the children. So again, baptism is a big, 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 big deal. And so it will tell us that in our catechism readings this particular month. So that was one example of reading from paragraph 1212 of the catechism, which is one of our assigned paragraphs this month. But I also want to remind you about what's called the compendium of the Catholic Church. The compendium takes that big, thick catechism book, condenses it down into something a little more manageable. Because I know a lot of parents are just stressed for time right now. So the compendium is one way to do it. Now you can go out and get one of your own. You can get a Kindle version of it for whatever uh, laptop device you have, or rather a tablet device that you have. Or you can go to our website. So I'm going to see if I can do this without losing any. Flip the view here to my, here we go, to my tablet. So you go to our webpage, oloslasvegas.org, and you see all those little items across the top menu there. Look for this one that says Olos Youth. And when you tap on that one, there we go, it's going to come up with this little option for helpful links. When you tap on that, it will take you to this page that shows you Two options here, a link for the compendium of the Catholic Church, of the catechism rather, the Catholic Church, and then the catechism itself. So if we tap on this option for the compendium, it will take us to the Vatican's website, vatican.va, in the English section of it. And so now don't let this intimidate you. You have to scroll through a lot of stuff to get there. So you start scrolling, there's an initial uh, kind of table of contents and all these links to part one, part two, part three, and part four. And then it will go to this called a motu proprio, which is a fancy letter from the Pope, uh, basically authorizing the use of this compendium. You scroll through that, you see Pope Benedict's signature there, and then pass this introduction, and then you'll get down to this section here that says part one, the profession of faith, and then we start coming into these bold numbered questions, these bold numbered line items. And so you'll notice this bold line right here, number one, what is the plan of God for man? And then you notice these lighter type uh, numbers right here, one through 25. 
and then a paragraph below it. What this means, what this tells us, is that this question number one here is condensing paragraphs 1 through 25 in the Catechism, condensing them into this one little sentence right here. So that's a lot to condense into one little sentence. But we go down to the next one. Why does man have a desire for God? We see these numbers here again. This paragraph here below is condensing paragraphs 27 through 30 and 44 through 45 also in the Catechism. And so when we see our readings from the Catechism in our assignments in our November overview, the compendium can help us maybe get through these a little faster. And so I'm going to scroll really fast through a bunch of these because I want to get to one of the paragraphs that we are looking at specifically this month. It's paragraph 1212, 1212, and I have to keep scrolling. <laughs> and notice we're really moving through the catechism. Here's paragraphs 1091 to 1109, and paragraph 1112. We're getting closer, talking about how the Holy Spirit works in the church. We're going to keep going to paragraph 1212. We're almost there, getting very close. All right. So we get to paragraphs that you see 12.10 and 12.11. Here's this one, 12.12 and 12.75. And so what is this question asking us about? How is Christian initiation brought about? Christian initiation is accomplished by means of the sacraments which establish the foundations of Christian life. The faithful born anew by baptism are strengthened by confirmation and are then nourished by the Eucharist. So again, this is one easy way to get through it if you don't have a catechism. Now, if you do have a catechism, great. Or if you don't, here's this online option as well, or the app that Miss Donna and I have talked about before. So that's all available on the website. So lots and lots and lots of stuff to go over this month. It's a lot. I know it's a lot, but we're here to help you. So parents, if you have some struggles or having some questions or some challenges, then please get a hold of me or Miss Donna or Father Tim, and we'll be happy to walk with you through some of these things. We still can't meet in person just yet. We hope one day that we can. Uh, we're still trying to figure out a way for Miss Donna and I to be able to assess your kids as well. You're doing some of the assessment. We have to do some of the assessment also just to make sure everybody is progressing right along and is ready to receive their sacraments when they get to that point, ready to move to the next step. Because if they're not, then we can't let everybody move forward. Um, so we have to be very careful on this. So parents, I know you're taking this seriously and I know you're working hard at it and you have a lot of other stresses with school and work and everything else too. And so we're here for you. We're here to help you. You're not alone in all this. We'll figure out some ways. And if you have ideas for us to be able to meet together, we'd love to hear them. So in the meantime, that's our assignments for this month in the Sacraments of Initiation and specifically Baptism. And please uh, um, help, please, bleh, please call us if you need any help. I, I've done too many of these today. I need to get off. So God's blessings upon all of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we hope to see you all soon. Remember to watch live stream Mass this weekend, 530 Saturday night or at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. God bless.